Hello YouTube and welcome back. In this video, we're still talking about end gap. We've discussed in a previous video how heat in the cylinder and different materials will change the end gap. That was really important because you can't really understand end gap until you understand end gap. All right, now let's talk about end gap once again. My next video after this one will be how to cut or file the end gap. Can't really start telling you how to cut or file the end gap if you don't know how to put a ring in a cylinder and check the end gap properly. Um, it may seem simple and basic. We are under training and in the training mentality, I want to go ahead and get everybody up to speed so when we watch the video on how to file or cut the end gap, you already know how to even check the end gap because if you can't check the end gap properly you shouldn't be cutting an end gap um so let's get you up to speed on how to even check the end gap because you may not have to cut an end gap if you're doing a boosted application um anything with a power adder guess what you don't need to go buy an oversized ring you're going to end up cutting the end gap wider because you got a boosted application so that being said, Danny, tell me how do I get to it? We're going to get out there and I'm going to show you how. I've made some tools. There's tools you can buy. There's tools that I've made. I'm going to show you what I've used. I'm going to show you how you can use it, um, a piston as your tool. And we want to get the piston parallel to the deck. It must be parallel to the deck. By parallel, I mean the deck is here. We want the ring at the same plane as the deck. If the ring is twisted in any way, as it twists, the ring gap gets wider because the cylinder becomes oval as you're twisting. It's still round, but the area is oval. You're gonna to have to learn geometry. I didn't go to school to learn geometry and I shouldn't be teaching you geometry. So let that be just where it is. Let it lay where it lays. Alrighty then. All right, we're gonna show you how to get the ring in there perfectly parallel to the deck, the quickest and fastest way. And then we're gonna use a feeler gauge to check the gap. It's about a lot of finesse on how it feels in the gap. That will be today's video. We're going to go out there. I'm going to show you that. We'll come back in here and we'll end the video. And next week, we're going to actually show you how to cut the end gap. All right, let's get out there and do something. The evolution of piston ring materials and coatings has allowed for a dramatic improvement in piston ring performance and durability. Today's piston rings are thinner, lighter, and stronger than your grandfather's piston rings. Innovations like gas-ported piston rings are possible because of today's advanced materials and coatings. You see, thinner piston rings aren't necessarily weaker. In fact, they can be stronger if they're made out of the correct materials and coatings. For more information, check out TotalSeal.com. And for more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. All right, these are the tools that, that are necessary um, for checking your piston ring end gap. Here's the cylinder bore. We want to know what the end gap is. So how do we check it? One of the keys in checking end gap is that if the ring it's not square in the bore. The more you tilt it, the wider it's going to get. The more you start straightening it up, the tighter it's going to get. So it's very important that it be in the bore perfectly parallel and flat to the deck. Unless you got a 409, people, or a Volkswagen. And we're not going to go all the different engines that might be a little off. So what could you use to set the ring in the bore? Here's a tool that I made from a cylinder sleeve. I put some tape on it to not scratch anything up. I put some washers on the end. I tack welded them on there. A nice little handle. And what that does is it allows you to push the ring down flat into the bore. Here's another tool. Um, took a piston, an old racing piston, put some washers on it, and that allows me to put in the bore to push the ring down in the bore perfectly flat so the important thing is that it be flat it doesn't matter that it's exactly the size of the bore it needs to just touch the ring and push the ring in there flat now we can check our end gap the way i just did on that one i just pushed it down so what do we want to do pull the ring up all the way to the top we don't even have to guess or take any kind of anything to figure out how much it needs to go down. I'll be right back with you. I'm back, don't despair. All right, I see a lot of y'all out there using something like this to sit there and push the ring down 
in the bore and go all the way around, pull it up to the ring, go all the way around. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. If you're at home um, doing one engine, you probably don't want to go out and buy a lot of tools, maybe even take the time to make you one, one of these. Um, as long as the ring is square, then you're okay. Let's talk about rings a little bit. A tip, if you're at home, I will have the link down at the bottom, I promise this time, for some of these tools if you want to go out and buy some tools. But here's a tip. There's the oil ring. What if we could put the oil ring on the piston See that oil ring on there? Check this out. Voila! I'm using the oil ring to stop the piston perfectly flat and now my ring is square in the bore. You could take the second ring, put the second ring on there and use that as your stop. So really your own tool Excuse me. So really your own piston that you already have with the rings could be your tool to square the ring in the bore. Um, you can use anything that will push the ring in down in the bore flat. Like I say, my preferred one is an old one piston. Really quick, really quick. You could use something like this. It takes a lot longer if you're at home having a cold beer with your buds in your garage and you're setting end gaps you probably want to slow it down a little bit and use something like this any of those um are acceptable ways using the existing piston put the old ring on it or put the second ring on it and use that as your tool so i think we're now past what are we going to use to square the ring in the bore and i think now you understand how important it is to have the ring square in the bore i'm going to use this particular tool right here i think i've done enough of talking and we need to just start doing some work all right this particular piston right here we want 6.5 on the top ring and we want 4.5 on the bottom ring that's 0 0.0065 that's six and a half thousandths that's not 60 um i don't know why should, this should video shouldn't be on where to put your decimal point if it should you need hit the like and subscribe tell me if you need to know decimal points okay so we're going to use a standard feeler gauge I like to use more than one feeler gauge. That way I can have one already set and I'll have three or four different different ones set. I actually, when I do it in the shop here, I have a set that I unscrew and I lay all the feeler gauges out on the table and then I can ease up on the end gap by just trying different feeler gauges and not having to go flip like this. Um, that's a commercial setting when you need to get these rings out done and quicker. Right now I'm gonna show you with feeler gauges like this because that's what y'all are going to have at home okay all right okay so what do we have we have the ring that we've put into the cylinder bore flush to the top another key is i like to use a molly ring this is a molly ring it's going to be a different ring than your second ring the second ring is going to be a cast ring. The second ring also is a different material. It's going to, it's going to need a different um, end gap. But let's look, if you ever get these confused and you're on the table, you go, oh my God, where my sheet go? And I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, we all know what we're talking about. And I know y'all know what we're talking about. Can you see the differences there? This is a, it's a cast iron ring as well. If you look at the sides, they're dark on the sides, just like the other rings. You can't tell from there. It's the face. It's molly embedded um, ring. And we really like a molly ring. It's real soft and gentle on the cylinders. Um, any bit of, of metal that gets in the cylinder, little bitty speck of dust and dirt will embed itself in the ring and not 
not scratch your cylinders as opposed to a chrome ring which would just push that stuff in there and it'll sit there and rub up and down and scratch your ring um a chrome ring while good for boosted applications and severe duty uh, when i was in high school i had i had chrome rings a different hone finish this isn't a a, a video on how to hone your cylinders um, but a chrome ring will take a rough finish. They're real hard to seat. It's going to smoke until you get them seated really good. Um, that's why you want a, a rough finish on the cylinder to bite that ring to help it try to seal. If you don't break it in properly, you will have glazing in the cylinder and you will have a problem. A molly ring will seal up. We'll get a seal up just turning the motor over. Here we use an extremely fine cylinder bore. We're honing it on a power stroke hone. I'm actually using Smoky Unix honing oil and his plateau hone procedure. So anyway, if you mix these up on the table and you want to know, oh my God, what did I do? The one that's shinier, that's the Molly embedded ring. And it is a cast iron ring, but it has a Molly embedded face on it. So that's how we're going to know if we've accidentally mixed up a ring. Tip of the day little window up there tip of the day um you're not going to set these rings up throw them back in the box once this ring is cut it's cut to that cylinder the slightest difference in half a thousands or thousands um in the bore size do the math and you'll see how it changes your ring end gap um so what i like to do is put the gap aiming down on all the rings this ring now it's pretty much going to be for this cylinder what am i doing i'm squeezing it in and putting the gaps aiming down where i can use a feeler gauge to check my end gap i got them all pulled up now to the top i'm going to use my Trusty little tool. Make sure the ring is high enough up in the board. Okay, all my rings now are pushed all the way up to the top. If you have any questions, bring them up again. There's no problem. Push it down, spin it, and now our rings are ready to check and see what the end gap is on them right now. What do we have? Okay, there's our ring end gap. I'm using a feeler gauge and all I'm doing is pushing it into the gap itself. It'll be pretty close because we did square these cylinders and get them all really close to begin with. And look at there. Amazingly, they're all right there. And what is there? My feeder gauges have been used for years and years and years. And while I can still read what they are on some of them, I prefer this method right here. So I'm at nine and a half. Let's call it a nine. I'm at nine. So right now we have nine thousands. What do we want for the top ring? We want 26. How do we get to 26? We did our math. It's a 430 inch bore. We timed it times 0 0.0065, which is six and a half thousands. That equals 0 0.026, which is 26 thousands. Our second ring is a 30 inch bore, 30. So it's 4.030 times 0 0.0045 equals 18,000, 0 0.018. So I've done the math. You can, most of y'all can probably do it up here in your head, get your grandkids out here and do your math. Um, so now I know what my target is. My target is 26 on the top ring, 18 on my second ring. I have nine. I gotta cut my second, uh, actually this is my top ring. I gotta cut my, my, my top ring now to get it to 26. Why did I start with the top ring? The reason I started with the top ring is that when I'm done with these rings, I will push those rings to the bottom of the cylinder, get them out of the way, and I'll put the second ring in the bore. I'll go ahead and cut the second rings in. They're gonna stay in the bore. As I'm ready to assemble the engine, I will pull 
two rings out at a time. And guess what? When I'm putting the ring on the on the piston, the oil ring goes on first, correct? Then the second ring, then the top ring. Now you know why I put the top ring at the bottom. I don't need to be pulling them out and juggling rings around. The ring I pull out of the bore first is my second ring. Put them on the piston. The ring I pull next is the top ring. So I go in reverse. Top ring first, push it down to the bottom when I'm done. Then the second ring. Just the tip of the day, that's the way I do it. A lot of people go there, do them, take them out, take tape, wrap tape around them, number them, put them on a table. Awesome, your home, your DIY. You can take a week to set your end gaps. Every night come home and cut one ring. Tag them with a piece of tape. However you do them, it's fine. The rings will have a dot aiming to the top. Um, if there isn't a dot or a bevel on the ring, it can go on either way. Um, well, I can do a whole other video just on rings and how to install rings without breaking them how how not to twist them about the end gaps which it, which way uh, the bevel should be aiming um, all of that is on the sheet of paper that comes with your rings and i don't think it's necessary but what do i know leave me a comment while you're at it stop right now hit the like and subscribe button okay so here we are another tip of the day my favorite set is this set of feeler gauges here and what do you notice in this feeler gauge besides they're extremely old and loose is look what I have written on the feeler gauges. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 21, 22, all the way across. So right now I know that I'm at nine. Don't be hating, people. Don't be hating. My favorite little tool, I got this piece of coat hanger that I just used to hold my ring. Okay, so, voila, this is what I do. I lay out all my, my feeler gauges on a table and I can ease up on it. There's nine, there's 10, 10's not wanting to go in, 13. So I can get all the way over to my 26 without having to flip through feeder gauges all the time. If you're at home, one set of feeder gauges is all you need. You got time, you're DIYing it at home. If you're in an environment in a shop, we need to knock, knock this out a lot faster and still be precision. So, probably wondering, Danny, why don't you just get with it? And we're back. I left that way and came in that way. Y'all get that? All right. I know it seems like a simple video once again. We're in training and I wanna get y'all up to speed of how to properly um, check the end gap before you start cutting it. You're gonna start cutting an end gap and if you don't have it in there parallel, all your numbers that you're getting aren't right and you can't move forward. So we need a good foundation and that's basically all this video is. It's a simple video of how to get a ring in there square in the bore to check the end gap. Doesn't seem complicated, but you would not you you wouldn't understand or you you would understand if you could believe how many people put a ring in there crooked and then try to check the end gap and give me all kinds of weird numbers. All right. That being said, now that y'all know how to do it properly, y'all won't be one of those people that are not getting proper end gap sizes. I don't know. It's been a long day. All right. Tell your buds, tell your neighbors, hit the like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. Shop mom reads them. She'll tell me them. I read them. Everybody reads them. The whole world reads them. That's another reason why you want to leave a comment. I like the funny comments. Um, tell me what you want to see. Tell me if I'm doing all right. Eh, don't leave me any negative comments. Actually, you can leave me negative comments. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. All righty. Let's get back to work. Um, I want to see y'all out there going checking some rings. Get your motor chair it apart and start checking some rings and playing with it. Me, I got actual rings to go play with back here. So let me get to work. I'll see you next time.